hey guys. guys welcome back to our channel now before we get into the actual video we just want to do a little intro you guys saw what this video is about yes. so it's your boy who got into and i'm chilling here with my lovely wife stephanie and together we are the Glovus, and this is the Glovus uncut bam, 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 bam. Whew, yeah yeah it took so much effort to be sitting here right now but um yeah please go ahead and like this video go ahead and click on that subscribe button as well as the notification button yes so what are we doing today today is today. a special day it's a special day as you've already seen we're kind of on this throwback flashback reflection reflective streak mm. right and you guys know you guys who are part of the inner circle know why that's so important, right? Yeah. For us to kind of be able to look back and... Um, Don't give them the juice now. They must be part of the inner circle. How? I get the inner circle know before the people that mm -hmm. the other people can They, they can know. never know unless they're in the inner circle. So I can't even encourage them now, even mm -hmm. after the fact. Mm -hmm. ah, sorry, guys. You said, I'm not choice. Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, I was going to give you a whole motivational spiel about why it's important to do throwbacks. But unfortunately, if you're not part of the inner circle, hi, sorry. I'm a choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, we basically just want to share with you um, a little bit about our Paris-France trip um, that happened last year around the Rugby World Cup time. And, um, yeah. Those of you that follow us on social media, that being Instagram primarily, definitely saw us um, spending some time there. But mm -hmm. we never really got to share it with you in this type of way. So. Which version of Lion King this is because obviously we watched Lion King on Broadway in New York but um, we're about to see which version this is Disneyland Paris so guys this trip was such a your last minute impulsive if ever spontaneous and you know what actually can I side note <laughs> side note when I said on especially on my TikTok right it actually I, I said that this was such a spontaneous trip and people were, yeah, they were coming for me saying, who goes on international trips, visas, oh, yeah, nee, no, nee, they nee, really nee. and, but my fighters were there saying, uh, guys, just relax. If there is such a thing as having spontaneous international trips. Also, I think because of the World Cup, it wasn't, didn't take such a long time for us to get our visas. I think mm -hmm. it took like three days. But what I meant by spontaneous was usually we plan, you know, in advance where we would be going, especially yeah. international trips. Like, you know, um, money we'd be spending, we save up for it. But I think this was so special because really it started with Ungani coming and saying, do you want to go to Paris for your birthday? Never mind the World Cup. It was like, do you want to go to Paris for your birthday? And it so happens that the World Cup's also happening there. The day before. The day before. Let's go. I thought this guy's kidding. I honestly was like, there's no way. We're not going to, you know, we're planners. We're going to do things the right way. But Jiggy Jiggy, we were there at the visa place doing, I was like, what? So I think that sometimes it's nice to be able, right? Yeah. To have those kind of, not all the time, guys, because planning is very important and sure. financial planning is very important. But what I loved about it was that we had, because of our saving and planning prior to this, we could have an impulsive moment mm. like deciding to go to Paris two weeks before the time. It was a week. A week before the time, before the time actually. It's so crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I think to, to, to be fair, I also didn't believe that we were going to go, even yeah. though I said, let's yeah. go. Yeah. You know, it was one of those things like, throw it out. And see. No, and see, see what happens. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I'm really glad we did it. Um, I think also just like the trip itself was just such a nice thing because of it being so spontaneous. There wasn't a pre-planned itinerary of things that we're going to do, places we're going to go, places we're going to eat, We whatever. didn't do an extensive search about the area yeah. that we would be living in. <laughs> You wanna? 
<laughs> Guys, so we were staying in a place um, called, called Sodom and Gomorrah. Ah, uh, ah, uh, baby, this is what it's called. <laughs> it's called Pigal. Pigal. Um, it was given this name. This, the, this What's the, the history of, yeah, the, of this, this name? This is the, Before we even knew the history. But th- this is the history that I found. So if you are French or from France, please comment down below. So apparently in some time, one of the wars, I don't know if it was World War One or World War Two, um, this area uh, was basically the area where a lot of um, sexual immorality was 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 happening. <laughs> um, so it was named Pig Alley, uh, hence the term Pigal. Hence yeah. Sodom um, and Gomorrah. And if you don't know Sodom and Gomorrah, guys, and that means you don't know your Bible, um, I would encourage you to go read up on Sodom and Gomorrah. Hey, but now it's 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 a, it's a tourist. But area, can I tell you, you something know? though? No, no, no. But all jokes aside, it's it was the place where the hotel was um, was beautiful. It was it was great where we were. Mm. It is very touristy. There was a lot of things to do. But I have never walked. We went the one evening. We went for <laughs> what did we want to go get? We dessert? wanted to go get um, some crepes yeah. and coffee. And there was this one like um, what's the main it street. The main street, right? Yeah. Guys, you know, like in Sauda those stores that offer services they're like blacked out in fact do you know red light district it's red light district in amsterdam <laughs> yeah similar to that so you know in south africa those stores they're like blacked out do you know what i mean you can like walk past you only see on the outside it says if you want you but they're not advertising you want, you. on the windows here <laughs> You could not even, and they were like next to each other. Steph said I must walk with my eyes closed. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> let's just blind lead blind. Because it is so on the nose. I kid you not, guys. It is so on the nose. It is so in your face. It is so um much. It's too much. It's like, just, it's literally like red light district. That's all I can say. And how I know about red light district is because when I went to Amsterdam for work, um, we weren't there, but people were like, hey, that's where they're going. And then I don't know what it was about. So I did a quick Google search. I'm like, goodbye. I'm not going. <laughs> Thank you kindly. I Thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for it. But that aside, so we didn't know that. And that was funny, right? Yeah. To find out. Even the street that we stayed in. Yeah, that was like this other club. We like, won't mention the name. Nah, I don't even it. remember the name. I, every I, night. I remember the name. Queue, Baba. That time opposite the club is the ATM. That queue for the ATM. And the club the club that is clubbing, doing the clubs of the things, the same as Red Light District is here. The other one is opposite here. The other one is there. But nonetheless, um, it was a very, very... Uh, you know, exciting trip. It Next time was, we'll research the... Yeah, you know, maybe stay in a different area. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really, really a great trip. I think also, like, being able to be that, if I can say, adventurous by just going there yeah. like that, I, I think allowed us, or at least from my, my perspective, gave me more room to be adventurous whilst we were there. Yeah. You know, um, things like getting onto the bikes. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Guys. In fact, I'm not waiting. Here comes the boca. Here comes the boca. Na 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 na. <laughs> so whilst we're busy riding around, um, I nearly died. <laughs> to be fair, before people start coming for me, hey, hey, Hongan, I asked Steph, like, you know, are you keen to? At first, I wanted us to get onto scooters because there was this culture of like um, scooters in, in in France and whatever. Um, and then only to find out in September they were banned, like literally September October they were banned. So then there's only bikes, like bicycles. But these bicycles have like motors, so it's not your normal bike. Anyway, so I'm like, yo, love, maybe let's get on a bike instead of Ubering and stuff, you know, see the city. I called my cousin and he advised, you know, get on a scooter, get on a bike, you know, go see the city. So I'm like, yo, let's do this thing. Ah, Steph is their champion, you know. Ah, let's yeah. go, let's go. Hey guys, when we get onto the bikes, Wait, huh? you're you leaving out a very important part. Which part? The part 
of the very important context is that Hungani, be it that it was long ago, Hungani, for all the time that he lived in New York, he used bike. He, for most of the time, he was going to auditions and everything on a bike. So he knows how to navigate traffic, small, uh, what is it, alleyways, small passages, you know, people thinking fast. Me, my history of riding a bike, even as a child, mm. is in South Africa, Joburg. There's not designated, you know, uh, lanes and people coming behind park. you, you know, like really fast and all that kind of stuff. You know, mm. it's like at the park, it's safe. There's mm. enough room. So now just imagine this bike. And also it has, like Ungani says, this motor aspect, which makes it go a lot quicker, even if you're not pedaling. Mm. So it's like a cross between... What? It's like a, it's like a, almost like an electric bike. Almost like an electric bike. Mm-hmm. So it actually goes a lot faster, even mm-hmm. though you're not pedaling. Hey guys, I fell, I don't know how many times. I was so blue and bruised. Um, you must understand that the locals, you know, of the place, almost, not almost everyone, but a lot of people yeah, lot use of people. Um, bikes and they're getting to work and they're going mm-hmm. to school. So they don't have time to be patient. <laughs> which stressed me out and some of the bike lanes were so narrow that Mm. i literally felt like i'm gonna fall over and i did fall over and then it's narrow like this but then there's trucks here and those people are also not driving they're not slow like in retrospect i think yeah i don't know if that was (laughs) really the most responsible thing to do as parents uh to a very young kid where's your mother European <laughs> mortuary. Because, guys, it was dangerous. I'm not even kidding. It was dangerous. It was really so dangerous. Before uh, all of this, I wanted to Ungani say... Even uh, ma- uh, Ungani even made, me, made us come back because the traffic is bad there. One evening, I even drove in the evening at night on those bikes. <laughs> so I wanted to say, before, before we even got on, like, or rather, as we got on, I was like, because of this motor thing, like literally if, if these are your feet now and you go, zoom, it's as if you went, zoom, 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 zoom. exactly. that's how it goes. So, wow, this was so silly. But anyway, you get the, you get the idea. So then I see my baby, hey, she's, so I'm like, no, there's some space here. Let's just do some rounds, you know, so that you get comfortable. Then we did some rounds. Then I'm like, oh, so you, you're okay. But and also, wait, wait. Then I'm like, oh, so we don't have to. You know, if you feel uncomfortable, then we, we can stop. Ah, but she, she soldiered on. I'm, and we had so I'm too competitive for fun. anything to beat me. Eventually, I got the hang of it. Mm-hmm. Eventually. But I was bruised. Um, and I like remember this one time I fell. Even one of the locals, they came running. In, madame, 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 madame. madame, 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 madame you Because <laughs> madame <laughs> fell. And also, guys... The thing had yeah, rakes, so but I would too. get so nervous that I would even. This one is is breaking with her Nike with my, dunks. With my feet, like I can't. You know? Hey guys. Anyway, but I did get it eventually, and once you do mm. get like, you know, once you get the hang of it, it is the most beautiful way to see the city. Yeah. I if you go, and I think it's it's mostly like you. It's very much a European thing. So anywhere yeah. in Europe that you go. And you're able to sort of, you know, use a bike or you get to see the place in a much different light than being in, in an Uber or yeah. you know, taking a car. So we're biking in Bavi. <laughs> then turn right onto the road. Hey. City girls are up. City girls are up. City girls are up. I knew that. I saw City boys worldwide. Hey, city girls are up. Leading the flock. In 500 meters, they're right onto Rudu Faubourg, Momatra. Turning right. Yeah, I'm passing you. I'm happy that I actually soldiered through, mm. bruised and all bruised, physically, emotionally, mentally. My ego was flat on the floor. Mm. This bike said, "I'm going to humble you." Mm. That time, my husband, ah, oh, experienced, 
He's <laughs> he's like one of the locals there, even taking videos, waving at me, looking up here, pointing there. He even knows the hand signal to <laughs> indicate to the vehicles he's turning here. Me, I'm like here. I'm here. I'm like this. But it's fine. I did it. You did it, I did it. Okay. Because why? Because we're coming back number one, baby. What is that now? Did you play rugby ever? Yeah. Yeah. So whole 360. Okay, give me a 180 and walk in reverse. Oh. Rugby World Cup. Now, I think, so basically when we landed, it was the day of mm -hmm. the Rugby World Cup finals. Mm -hmm. And we we're like, yo, where are we going to go? We had tried to get tickets. Tickets were like so expensive to, to the actual game at the stadium. Um, even on the plane coming, they were chatting to different people. Oh, no, I got my tickets here. I got my tickets here. Um, and then eventually... We get to the hotel, like, okay, shop, let's take a nap, two hour nyana, maybe an hour, get up, get ready, and then let's go find a fan park. Mm -hmm. uh, Sham, Steph is on board, she's there, ba 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 ba. Finds like three options, I think it was. Three options, we look at, okay, this one's the closest one, this one, if that one is not vibey, we'll go to that one, it's covered, what, 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 sharp, boom. Ah, uh, we get dressed, we what, we what, we what head to the fan park around like 5 p.m. Hey, Warra, we've just arrived here. Uh, yeah, I can send you location. Um, but yeah, we've just arrived. We've just arrived. Get there, it's a bit empty, but the weather Yo. was looking a bit shaky. So like, no, okay, maybe, you know, they have something planned because that place was packed with South Africans. Yeah. Like, even as time was going, South African people, like, coming. shirts, yeah, was, the flag, scarves, vibe. just kept Yo. coming through. And then the rain starts to pour down. But now they had no covering. Not even one place. The screen is there, out yeah, in the open. Nothing. And I think what, why, like, they really should have considered. It's because they were not in the finals. True. Um, was because they had an entire stage. They had live yeah. performances. And even the live performances were like packing you up. Know you know when they stopped playing music. They stopped playing music. <laughs> so it killed the vibe completely. And by that time, it was already getting late. Yeah, it was like seven. It was already seven. And we were really trying to be like, okay, we, we, we really want to, you know, watch the game somewhere. I also want to do a second disclaimer to my first disclaimer. Because, mm. you know, people, they are like, not that we're concerned. One thing about us, we're not concerned about people. But I had... Another co another comment video that was also trending on my TikTok was people Which saying, one? "Who goes all the way to Paris to uh, go and, and doesn't go to the and stadium. doesn't go to the stadium?" And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I was like, guys, like once in a life. Yes, it was in a once in a lifetime opportunity to go and watch a game at the stadium, mm. but please." trust as much as that was beautiful that the game was happening there that was not the primary reason that we were actually going number it actually one it wasn't the reason it wasn't the reason it just so happened that it was you know coincidentally at the same time mm. number one number two we were not going to buy two tickets for close to the price of our the entire trip. trip we were not going to do that and maybe other people were going to do that but we weren't going to do that we yeah. were not even for once in our lifetime we were not we were already being impulsive we were not going to be that impulsive right mm. So people are like, who goes, hey, 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 you could have stayed in South Africa. Even our pubs and clubs and yin, yin, yin were better than we, we, we. Yeah, yeah, yous were so boring. I said, why are people like those guys on social media? They've got liver. Because, baby, they also wanted to go somewhere and they couldn't go. But can't go. you just be happy for people? Why do you have to be so sour? That's not the mandate on social media. When you read the T's and C's, the T's and C's actually say that you have to be rude. You have to be mean. Anyway, I, 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 I still... It's okay. The I naysayers think people, were naysayers. I think people like miss out on just understanding even just the, the idea of atmosphere. Yeah. The whole place was just filled. I mean, everywhere we went, you saw South Africans. Yeah. And even if... 
even the next day, the day after, people every were with their rugby t-shirts and every time I'm people sure walk past. I'm sure they were past, not washing them. Yeah, when, they, when you walk past them, you know, give a high five, you say, go walk up. But like, come back know, home, I will just be like. Mm. You know, so anyway, we ended up um, at an Irish at an pub. Irish pub. Recommended by our Uber driver, actually. Yes. Um, and there was like maybe six South Africans. Yeah. Amongst like... This picture right here, that's the number of South Africans that were and there. And how many? The rest were all blacks. Mostly all blacks. And, and the Irish or yeah. Ireland. There we go. Oh, they were sour. But it was just it was all heavy. blacks everywhere. So after we won... Wait, before that, uh-huh. remember that lady that was tuning in? Yo. <laughs> So, guys, you must know we pack like sardines, right? And this literally, woman, there's no place like we like no this to even move. And I'm standing if you have a drink, it's spilling. Yeah. So, I'm standing behind this woman, and I'm obviously really close. And every time our team, you know, scores a try or you know, get excited, I'm cheering, obviously. Mm-hmm. I'm screaming, I'm like, Yeah, go, go, go. So is she. She was also, does she not turn around and say to me, Uh, could you not scream in my ear? I said. <laughs> Lord, the colored in a game. I'm like, Lord, please, <laughs> how are you gonna come to a pub and then ask me to not scream in your ear? But when the all blacks, you're the ones like it was so, like, nah, it, was, it tense. was, it was so tense. But I carried on, Shem. Ah, uh, no, I had that. What is it? That Lindy Lindy. Mm, to do. Lindy. I had it, and now we were there screaming. Then she started like arguing, even with the two, with the, the girls, two white girls. girls that were there. Um, what because is it? your hair? Your hair. My... Every time you turn, your hair's in my face. Oh, she was so sour. But after we won, and after we spent like three, four minutes, you know, eh, screaming and whatever, we were like, let's go, because it was starting to feel a bit dangerous. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was quite hectic. Eh? Like you could feel the what's it hostility. Yo, people were like, mad. Was... I said, mm mm. And I and I wondered to myself if it was the opposite. Yeah. How we would have celebrated would, with them. I, I mean, outside of that, just how would the interaction the interactions yeah. have been? But on our way mm. back to the hotel, we found some South Africans on the side of ah, the we road. Singing, we were singing, dancing. dancing. <laughs> Okay, so the crazy part was we were in an Irish pub and there were seven South Africans amongst over 300 New Zealanders. Riva Trapile! Riva Trapile, go fell! Ziakala, yeah, man! Ziakala, Ziakala! Ziakala! Hey! Yeah, no, we had to leave. Hey, 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 hey. You, to, you, you know when you start seeing people eyeing you, like, ah. <laughs> yeah. It still turned out to be such an amazing yeah. experience. Everywhere we went, wearing the, yeah. the, the, the the jersey or even the flag, people would say congratulations. congratulations. It, was, it, was it, was, cool. it was really cool. So definitely um, something I do not regret at all. So one of my favorite things um, about our trip was the architecture that we saw. Mm. I think just the beauty of the buildings yeah. um, from whether Every it's a building. bridge, whether it's an ancient Whoa. building built in 18 whenever. Um, it was just so like mind blowing or mind boggling mm. to think that humans yeah, created, created sure. these things. Um, and even just going to the museum, I don't know if it's pronounced Louvre, Love, that one. Yeah. Me. <laughs> Man, 
I and wish then, we had three, four, five days yeah. to walk around that place because it's just so amazing to see some of these artifacts and stuff, whether they are from a time of struggle or not a time of struggle, just to be able to appreciate something that has lived for so many years was just for me yeah. so phenomenal. And also to be able to see the Mona Lee. Mona Lisa on the way. Even though it's so small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I had to zoom in like crazy. You can see in this video, but just being there and seeing everybody else just in awe of this piece of art. And obviously it's not like it's, there's nothing other than a great PR stunt that made this thing really so yeah. big in terms of just like globally, but it's just amazing to know that yeah. you've seen it with your own eyes. Um, what was your favorite thing? I think we've mentioned most of the stuff that I enjoyed yeah. the most, probably the spontaneity of just going, um, experiencing the city, you know, eventually mm -hmm. on, on, on bike and also the architecture of every single building and the detail in, you know, mm -hmm. of the churches and, and that those, I think that atmosphere was definitely, so I think I'd echo that. Those what were, about the food? I, are we now at the non-favorite part? <laughs> no, I just wanted to know. <laughs> you know... <laughs> Especially Maybe. when you cook like Steph. I think we've been like to enough places also for me to make this. We haven't been to a lot of places, but yeah. we've traveled to enough places for me to make this conclusion. Mm -hmm. That my palate is such a local home. I don't know what maybe there's some places that like maybe when we explore like the African continent mm -hmm. more, you know, but Europe, America. I'm just like, guys. Oh, hey, the food. The food was not horrible, <laughs> but it's so. I, I and I and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way. It's preference. It was just bland, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of the time, and that time you are spending because you know the rent is not doing grand. So mm -hmm. you know you're really spending a lot of money for you know pasta or for whatever it is that you're eating, and I'm just like. Ah, guys, um, my favorite meal was 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 when we went to Disneyland, which we're gonna come back to now. But, no, we can go there. Um, went to Disneyland and we went to go and try with Score Five Guys. Oh yes, that was by far the favorite. I think we had it twice, right? Yeah. burgers were amazing but the rest of the food the only thing i appreciated was that i have never been able to eat so much bread and not be bloated because clearly their their croissants and stuff is very fresh and yeah. the way they make it so that part i enjoyed <gasps> was if we move to europe i'm opening a south african bazaar what of course. because i'm going to take some aromat or norox or of course or stock cubes mm. or cool. Some th I'm gonna have to take some stuff down mm. there because it's <laughs> we'll ship a whole container. No, really, we'll have to. So that was <laughs> that was my Disneyland was one of our last stops as well. Um what's your rating, Disneyland? One out of ten. Honestly. Uh, honestly, I think probably like a seven. Mm. Um I'd say a seven. Paris. Not Paris. No. 
Paris. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's go. We just had breakfast. Uh, we've already been inside, but not like really, really inside. We got lost. But anyway, let's get started. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, baby, sur le push, sur le push. <laughs> I know. First ride down. Couldn't even record this, guys. We need a GoPro. Um, go ahead and uh, give us some super thanks there. We need some funds for a GoPro. <laughs> oh, does it take pictures? Um, I'm pretty sure I had my eyes closed. So, <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. But it was good. Look at yeah. my <laughs> So we're basically discussing and let us know in the comments like if you were in your early twenties or are in your early twenties and your family, your parents were like, yo, here's X amount of money, let's just say five hundred thousand Rand. You can do with it as you please. A million rand, you can do with it as you please. You can travel, you can buy a car, buy a house. You can go to varsity, you cannot go to... Like, what would you do? What would you do and how would that shape your life? That's why I pretty much took out the camera. Because, Steph, we were having this conversation off camera, but I think it's such an important question to ask yourself. Like, <coughs> given the opportunity, what would you do? You gotta keep walking, yeah. The like the rides and stuff we went on was fine. It was cool, but because there's also it's like split to yeah. two with the theme parks, yeah. And we only had time like to experience one of the theme parks, but also, I don't know. There's just so much to do that it becomes overwhelming, and you don't get to do everything, mm -hmm. and, and you, get you get so tired. Um, the long queues. To wait. At some point, we were like buying tickets to bypass the queues because then otherwise you'd literally mm. just, you know. Oh, your boy and girl don't like to wait. We done got the express line. Check this out. Check this out. Hey. Indiana Jones. That's a good ride. It's too short. It's too short. Way too short. too short. But it's a, it's a good one. Check out the set though. This is so crazy. Oops. Sorry. pretty cool and i was really looking forward i think um on my tiktok i did a bit of what i ate at disneyland i don't think i put everything there but i was again looking forward to the food because yeah. i'm a foodie and you know i'm gonna be happy with this great food and again besides lunch even the snacks and stuff i was having i was just like we we'll have to teach them how to make tough apple it's not the one not bad but Traveling for me, so Disneyland took conclusion with Disneyland. I enjoy Disneyland. I yeah. said, I definitely want to go with Rue yeah. when she's older. Uh, also, what this was this was a nice experience because I always thought maybe if ever we go, you know, with kids, you'd go with. I wouldn't recommend going with young kids. It would be like like young young, you know. Yeah. They have to be able to be of an age where they can actually experience and appreciate, you know. Mm. So I was like, and remember, and remember. So I was like. Well, definitely in a couple of years, we'll come back and I think we'll have a different experience with her just because I think she'll have so much more fun. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed it. I don't think that it was a waste of our time or that I no, love that, that we were able to go. I um, think it kind of brought the the childness like, in yeah, us. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't think we've ever really been to like an amusement park and We stuff. haven't. Um, so that was also nice to like... I'm not a roller coaster person. So almost every single ride, man, like, <laughs> uh, so she was having a good laugh but yeah it was just really nice to to kind of giggle and see that yeah. side of us um Hongs and i were talking about i think while we were at disneyland mm -hmm. like how it's such a privilege if you um grew up 
in a home or household or whatever they as a young person you're able to travel whatever that travel might look like because mm-hmm. traveling really opens up your mind like oh, in yeah. a different way and we were speaking about how we would love to be able to you know work hard enough to be able to you know give that opportunity to our children so that mm-hmm. if they do decide after school that you know what we're not going to study for a year or two years we could you know give them the opportunity to go and see you know other places in the world so i feel like you know in the travels that we've done we've really it really you really come back with a different outlook on Mm. life and a different level of like ambition and a different level of like okay cool you know let's hustle let's work let's do that things are possible so that's like the one side but the flip side of it also is every time we travel I honestly have a different kind of appreciation for home yeah. and the people at home. We've got issues. We all know South Africa. We got so Please many issues. Go and vote. Please go, vote. go and so, vote. So yes, we've got issues, but even with those issues, they yeah. literally so far, I can't think of a place that I could call home. Obviously, because this is home, but at the same time, um, the people, you know, here, the, the majority of the time, the warmth, the fitness, the food, the culture, the quality of life that you do get to, you know, mm. um, enjoy. And I know this is not true for everyone. Sure. Some people, not everyone has, you know, that kind well, you're of... speaking from your perspective. But I'm speaking from my perspective. And so I... Um, when we travel, I, I love it because I get to see how other people live and how they think and how they operate. But at the same time, after a while, I'm like, cool, we're ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> and you know this. Even when we were in New York, Every I'm like... Every time. I'm like, right, this was nice. Like, mm, so... So, gonna, our flight is on which day? day? When are we going home? <laughs> you know, <laughs> after like some days have passed. I'm just like... And when we get to the airport... We know we are in South Africa. Yeah, immediately. Immediately. I mean, I always have a smile on my face because I'm like, here's my people. Yeah. Even if they're not smiling at you, here's my people. So that's... I just want to I just wanna add on the, the whole, like, seeing other places. There's a, a high school friend of mine. After finishing high school, um, his family blessed him with sending him off to Switzerland. Oh. And he went to one of these companies in the, I think it's Swiss Alps or whatever, where people do snowboarding and all that stuff. But he was working as a bartender. But he says like that experience completely changed how he viewed life because of the different people he constantly interacted with. Because there were so many different tourists, people from different places and all that kind of stuff. By the time he came back home, he kind of had figured out what he wanted to yeah. do. You know, he yeah. moved down to Cape Town. He started, he's also in the entertainment business um, from a, um, a crew perspective, like DOP photography and stuff like that. And he's doing amazing, yeah. you know, but he figured out what he wanted to do yeah. through that time. I think sometimes we block that opportunity because we think it's just a waste of time. Yeah. But when it's utilized well, it saves a lot of time. Yeah. So, yeah, man, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it to this point, definitely give us a thumbs up. And please comment down below if you've ever been to Paris or if you've ever been to Europe. Um, and, you know, what's and your you guys, opinion? And also where you guys think we should go to next. Oh, hectic. I didn't see that one coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us, where do you think? And it could be and anywhere. Why? And Don't why? Don't just say... Yeah, yeah and, and why? why? I where where would you want to go to next? Jamaica, Jamaica. Jamaica. Uh, I'm joking. I, I mean, I would like to at some point, but I think next, I think somewhere on the African continent, yeah. maybe Kenya. Kenya is definitely. I was gonna say Kenya. I definitely yeah. think um, African Kenya or like um, uh, island kind of tropical place is where I'd want to go to next. What, like Bali. Yeah, Thailand. maybe not Thailand, Zanzibar. Zanzibar, Bali, somewhere like that. Um, but yeah, I think I can pose on the European side of things for now. <laughs> All right, guys. Don't but forget, love you guys. Love you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click on that notification bell and join the inner circle so that you can get the motivational stuff she wanted to give you because on that choice. Ah, but Anna Shane, choice. you could have let me just tell the people. No, baby. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.